that record? All right, this is chapter 4, section 4.4 4 and 4.5, exponential growth and decay. Uh, luckily, this is a topic that you've seen before, hopefully in your science classes. Uh, mathematically, though, this is the first time that you will have seen an exponent that is a variable. Okay? We haven't really done much with that. We used to do a lot of it in Algebra 2, uh, but this is the first time in your, probably in your math career, uh, where you've seen something uh, that looks like this. Y equals B to the X. Uh, first thing we'll do is talk about growth, exponential growth. Uh, the definition or the formula is Y equals B to the X. It looks exactly like uh, the decay formula. The only difference are the parameters on B. We're talking about exponential growth. What are the parameters on B? Anybody know? It's right here. Y equals B to the X. And when it's growth, we say B is greater than 1. Okay, Daniels, if you can't see, you need to move to that other desk. Y equals B to the X. So B is greater than 1. Examples would be Y equals 3 to the X. Or Y equals negative 4 to the X. You might say negative 4 is not greater than 1. But what is this really? What is this? What is negative 4 to the x, really? Negative 1 times 4 to the x. Very good. Negative 1 times 4 to the x. So this is still growth. Okay? It can be positive or negative. Okay? But as long as b is greater than 1. Another example, uh, the hardest one that I can come up with would look something like this. and have all those parts and still be growth. Why is it growth? <coughs> because that number is greater than one. Okay? Another example people mess up all the time is this. That is still growth. The one half has nothing to do with it. I'm not looking at the one half. One half is not B. B is your base. It's the number that the X is being raised to. So I'm only looking at the three, not the one half. Probably the biggest one that people miss is y equals 5 over 2 raised to the x power. They see a fraction and they automatically think less than 1. But 5 over 2 is really what? 2 and a half, two and a half as a mixed number. But 5 over 2 raised to the x power, these are all growth. These are five examples of exponential growth. Okay, questions? Any questions on this? All right, now let's talk about the graph of exponential growth. Luckily, I'm not going to ask you to graph anything by hand. You're only going to have to tell me, you're only going to have to pick from multiple choice. Okay? So we're going to use what we know about exponential growth in order to eliminate uh, ones that are, that are not it. Most exponential growths start out here, and then they get really big, really fast. Okay, we say that this looks like a J. Okay, that's what we're going to call it. You should be writing this down. If I'm writing it on the board, you should be writing it down. The other kind of exponential growth that people mess up all the time are the ones that look like this. This is an example of exponential growth. Okay, we say it looks like a 7. Kind of looks like a 7. The reason people mess these up is they say, well, how can that be growth if it's getting smaller? If I'm reading it from left to right, it, it's going down. That's a not exponential growth. Well, it is because you have to look at it in relation to the x-axis. Growth, and you should write this down, the graph will be expanding away from the x-axis. So if I'm talking about exponential growth, it's getting away from the x-axis. It's growing. As I read it from left to right, it's growing. It's getting away from the x-axis. Same thing here. Even though it's getting smaller, it's going down here to negative infinity, it's getting away from the x-axis. Okay? So technically, both of these are exponential growth. Okay? Questions? We need to know about the J and the 7. Both of those. Alright? So, 
how are we going to graph exponential growth? How are we going to eliminate A, B, C, D and come up with the right answer? Uh, <clears throat> let's look at an example. Y equals 3 to the X. Okay, very easy problem. How are we going to A, B, C, D, how are we going to eliminate? Well, here we go. A uh, looks like this, looks like a J. B looks like a 7. C looks like a J. And D looks like a 7. Okay, it's going like this. All of these are growth. Okay? So, but if I'm looking at this and the 3 is positive, there's a positive there. Do you think it's going to be a J or a 7? A it's going to be a J. It's going to be the normal positive route. If A is negative, then it looks like a 7. So we can immediately eliminate B and D. So we know it's either A or C. Right? Now, how do we do, differentiate between A and C? They both look like J's. How do we do the well, next step? The, the, the other arrow. Does that matter? Mm -hmm. The wider it is. No. Where it passes the Y axis. You're on the right track. What we're going to do now is pick an easy point. It's kind of like finding the vertex. You can do it in your head almost. Most of the time, well, I won't say most of the time, we're going to look right here and we're going to say, what value can I plug in here that will give me a nice, easy answer? Three. If I stick in zero for X, <coughs> that's the easiest thing in the world because anything raised to the zero power automatically is what? One. Is one. So now A and C, what do I have to look for to, to eliminate one of them? Which one goes through 0, 1? If they both went through 0, 1, then I would try 1, 3. Right? Isn't 1, 3 another value? Normally, you don't even have to go that far. What you're doing is making a simple T-chart. But most of the time, all you have to do is pick one point, and you can eliminate one of them and say, hey, A is the answer. I mean, it's, it's that easy. Okay? It's either going to be A, B, C, D, or A, B, C, or you know, A through E, and you're going to have different graphs, and you're going to have to make a decision. Okay, questions? All right. Let's see if you can give me the parameters on a couple more and then we'll talk about the cat. How much time we got, Peter? 7.30. 7.30. Two and a half. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can do a couple more than that. How about this one? All right. First question, your, the, the direction say graph. What's the first thing you got to figure out? Is it growth or is it decay? It's growth, it's growth right? B, oh, growth. B is a big number bigger than one, so it's growth. All right, is it going to look like a J or is it going to look like a seven? seven. seven. It's going to look like a seven, right? It's going to look like this. Okay, you with me so far? Now we have to pick a point. I made it as hard as I can make it. What point, hold on, what point can I plug in right here that will make all of this very easy and I can move right on to my next point. Zero. I could plug in zero, but that wouldn't be easy. That would give me negative one. What's, what's better? Positive one. I stick in a positive one, this becomes zero. Now, be careful now. All right, if that becomes zero, do I get one or negative one? Negative one. I get negative one. You have to be careful. You have to remember that's negative one times two to the zero. If that becomes one, I still got negative one. Negative one plus one is what? Zero. Zero. So if I can figure out that it's growth, I can figure out it looks like a seven, and I can figure out it goes through one zero, which may or may not be the y-axis, you know, I mean, you were on the right track. I can figure it out, A, B, C, D, from that. Okay? I'm not going to ask you to hand graph an exponential function. In the real world, you would never graph one by hand. You would use a graphing calculator or something on the computer. Okay, um, and on the EOCT, you're going to have to pick from four choices. So why not teach you how to do it? Okay, any questions on graph? You want to do one more? Let's do one more. Let's say y equals 3 over 2 uh, raised to the x plus 2 uh, minus 4. Okay, first question, growth or decay? Growth. growth, right, because 3 over 2 is bigger than 1. Is it going to look like a j or a 7? A J, right? It's going to be going up like this. Okay? Now what point would be the best point to plug in to make life easy? Negative 2. Negative 2 is a great point. Why? Because it makes all of this become 0. That means all of this becomes 1. 
What's 1 minus 4? 